In this video, I'll put together a geometry node setup in Blender to curve deform any mesh, not randomly, but intentionally. Not mathematically, but intuitively and imaginatively, without bothering much about the underlying math. The workflow is non-destructive and generative so as to create multiple variations of the curved mesh. Blender, just in case you are not aware, is a completely free to use for all purposes, open source, feature rich, 2D and 3D, modeling, rendering and animation software suite, which you can download from blender.org. The link is in description below. For this video, I am using Blender 3.1.2 stable version. This node setup will work for any mesh, but for this video, I will be using a rectangular hexagon mesh which I have generated from this rectangular hex grid generator blend file. This blend file is free to download on my Gumroad page. You will find the link in description below. First off, after opening the file, rename and save it to a location of your choice. I have already saved it. In the viewport window, you will see a rectangular grid of hexagon curve primitives generated by the node setup shown in the geometry nodes editor window. You can adjust the number of rows and columns, the radius of hexagons and the gap value from the node setup. In the outliner window, rename the object to curve mesh or to any name of your choice. In the geometry nodes editor window, rename the node group to curve deform mesh or to any other name of your choice. The render engine is EV. For viewport shading, I am using matcap default lighting random color with cavity and outline options on. In viewport overlays, 3D cursor and origins are off and wireframe on the geometry is on. Before proceeding, make sure node wrangler add-on is also switched on. In the edit preferences add-on menu, type node wrangler in search bar and make sure the add-on is switched on. I am additionally using shortcut viewer add-on by Blender Sushi to display keyboard shortcuts here on the bottom left of the viewport editor. The link again is in description below. Also, do remember to save your file at regular intervals. Now let's get going. To start, set the radius of hexagons to 1, number of rows to 25 and number of columns to 50. Set gap value to 0. As of now, these hexagons are instances of circle curve primitive set to resolution 6. You can open the spreadsheet editor window and see that there are 1.2k instances. To convert the instances into a mesh, in the Geometry Nodes Editor window, left click on the Realize Instances node and press M to unmute it. Now in the spreadsheet, you can see a single mesh with vertices, edges and faces. To optimize this mesh and remove overlapping vertices and edges, in the Geometry Nodes Editor, unmute the Merge by Distance node. In the spreadsheet, now you can see a reduction in number of vertices, edges and faces. So now, we have an optimized mesh to work on. Let's first add the set position node here. Connect the offset socket to a vector multiply node and then add a normal input node and a combined XYZ vector node as multipliers. Now we will add an icosphere mesh primitive. This icosphere will act as a controller of the curved deformation of the mesh. Set subdivisions to 3. Add a transform node to it and then add geometry proximity node to it. Connect the distance output of geometry proximity node to Z value of the combined XYZ vector node. In the viewport, you can see the hexagon mesh transforms into a curved form. To visualize better, let's add a join geometry node and connect to it the geometry output of the transform node of the icosphere. Now you can see both the curved hexagon mesh and the icosphere in the viewport. As you adjust the transition and scale input fields of the transform node, you can see how the mesh gets curved. This is the impact of moving the icosphere in x direction. This is the impact of moving it in y direction. This is the impact of moving it in z direction. 
This is the impact of scaling the icosphere uniformly. You can also scale the icosphere in each direction separately. Scaling it on Z axis alone will not have much of an impact. Because the icosphere is a sphere, rotation will not have any impact on the mesh. However, if the icosphere is scaled on any single direction, the rotation will impact the curved deformation of the mesh. Next, we will add the multiply math node just after the geometry proximity node. The multiplier value of this node decides the strength of the curve effect. While the multiply math node is selected, press shift P to add a frame around the node. From the side panel, add the label strength to it. Lastly, add a map range node after the geometry proximity node. This acts as a fall off decider of the curve effect. Select smoother step to smoothen the affected boundary. While the map range node is selected, press shift P to add a frame around the node. From the side panel, add the label fall off to it. This, in principle, is a node setup to curve deform any mesh. You can now select all these 8 nodes together and press Shift P to add a frame to the nodes. Label them Curve Deform A. Before going to the next step, practice and develop a good visual understanding of the impact of transition, scale, strength and fall of values. First by connecting the icosphere to join geometry node and then by disconnecting it. As you can see, you do not need to bother about the underlying math affecting the curving of the mesh. You can add a transform node at the end to allow for translation, rotation or scaling of the final mesh. Let's move to the next step. In the viewport, click on the mesh to select, then press Shift D. A new object will appear in the outliner window. In the geometry nodes editor, click on the number next to the name of the node group. This will create a separate independent node group for the duplicate mesh. Now we can edit the second mesh without affecting the first mesh. Move the new mesh on X axis from the transform node. Select all the nodes inside the frame labeled Curve Deform A, press Shift D to make a copy and move it down the original frame. Label the new frame as Curve Deform B. Add a multiply vector math node just before the offset socket of the set position node. Connect the two frames as multipliers of the vector multiply node. Also, connect the new icosphere geometry to 
to join geometry node so that you can see the mesh and both the icospheres in the viewport. Now as you transition the second icosphere on x-axis, the mesh will curve deform under the influence of the two icospheres. Play with the transition, scale, strength and fall of values and develop a visual understanding of their impact on the mesh form. Let us create another copy of the mesh. In the viewport, click on the mesh and press Shift D. A third object will appear in the Outliner window. In the Geometry Nodes editor, click on the number next to the name of the node group to create an independent node group for the duplicate mesh. Now we can edit the third mesh without affecting the second mesh. Move the new mesh on the x-axis from the Transform node. Play with the transition, scale strength and fall of values and develop a better visual understanding of their curving impact on the mesh form. Let's take the next step now. Let's create another copy of the mesh, this time moving it in y direction. From the outliner window, turn off the visibility of the third mesh. This time, let's add a third curve deform node group and see how it impacts the curve deformation of the mesh. As you can see, we are now able to add complexity to the curve deformation of the mesh. Let us practice some more and create a fifth copy of the mesh. This time, let's add a fourth curved deformed node group. Before calling it quits, let's add a sixth copy of the mesh. By now, you would be getting a good hang of how to curve deform any mesh as per your will, intuition and imagination without bothering about the math involved. There are ways to deform mesh randomly using the random value node or using the texture nodes. And there are ways to deform it using complex math nodes. But in my opinion, this is by far the cleanest and easiest way to deform a mesh as per your own imagination. This workflow puts all the control in your hands and no understanding of underlying math is required.
This brings us to the end of this video. I will put this final blend file up on my Gumroad page. If anyone wishes to encourage, appreciate and support me, you are welcome to download the file. I will put the link in the description below. Hope this video has added to your understanding of geometry nodes and Blender. If you found the video useful, please be generous in liking it and subscribe to my channel. You are welcome to follow me and connect with me on Twitter. Also, you are welcome to check my Gumroad page and ArtStation profile for other useful stuff related to architectural design. The links are in description below. Thank you for watching.